So as we reboot our astrophotography program here, I am really going to start pushing the boundaries of things that I want to do and trying new things and just expanding what we are able to do and not pushing that easy button every time is one of the main things. And if you look back here, you know, you can see that we've got our EAF in on the RC6. So shooting long focal length is one of those things. I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel, and we're gonna play with some pixels today. One of those things is trying different ways of stretching. We have so many different things to do. We've got the easy button with the great SETI Astro statistical stretch. We've got things like the screen transfer function. And of course, we've got the old school manual type of way. I'm going to go through here on these individual images on PixInsight and show you some of the stretching stuff and probably what I am going to be doing mostly in the future for right now and some bonus material this is old rasa 8 data and we're gonna just show how we can fix all of this old stuff now it's really fun whenever we get into that stuff so let's do it right now so we've got three identical images here what i've done to these of course is pull the stars run blur exterminator a couple times we've done a graxpert on it to get our background and every one of them is just a clone of each other so there's no stretching applied to nothing at all now this is in no way shape or form to discourage you and try to say that one stretching is better than the other again i'm just pushing myself and trying new things now the stretch that I have kind of fallen into now is kind of the old school method, but a little bit of twist of what Sky Story is doing. And, you know, speaking of Sky Story, you can see down here at the bottom of the screen when to talk about pushing new things. You know, we've been playing with Infinity Photo. We're playing with the Photo Lab 8, which has a 30 day free trial and is pretty freaking amazing. So I'm trying to wrap my head around all this stuff right now. So, you know, while we're waiting on gear to get here, we got plenty of stuff to do. So anyway, let's get into this. By the way, thanks a lot to all of my channel members. And if you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description below. I'd really appreciate it if you think I've deserved it. And if not, give me a like, drop a comment below. Tell me what kind of stretching you are guys are doing. So the first type of stretch is, of course, the easy button, which is the statistical stretch by SETI Astro, which works great. We've got different levels we can set. We can do like a little bit of a curves boost on it if we want to, which I always do just to kind of help us out a little bit. It's got the preview built into it that we can take a little look at when it does the stretch here. And, you know, all in all, this tool does a great job. It gets you like 90 some percent the way there if you don't want to do anything else at all. So we are just going to basically take this baby and park it right down here on the bottom. The next one we'll do is we'll kind of do the old school type of method, which is just the actual screen transfer function. And then this is where we get into that whole little type of complicated thing where we uh, take that STF stretch that's here and we, you know, do the whole copy and paste where we bring it down here and then we take this and put it up here and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't as you can see that time it failed me so that just kind of is the way it is there we go so there is our screen transfer stretch so let's go ahead and reset this and we'll get rid of all that stuff and we'll just go ahead and pop this one down here and hide it and actually let me make a clone of this one too. So that way we can do this four times. So the other way that a lot of the old school and purist people type to do is just a regular type of stretch. And we're not even talking about GHS in this one because we all know that that you can really get into the weeds on GHS. So with this typical stretch, you know, kind of what you do is you just kind of bring you know, we do our stretch and we just kind of bring everything up 
to where we're getting to just the beginning of the feet of the light curve. And then basically what you can do is you can kind of zoom in a little bit here. So that way we're not, uh, you know, clipping data or anything like that. It's kind of subjective on what you want to do. Again, you can kind of zoom in a little bit by rolling over this tab that will do your horizontal. This here will do your vertical, but then don't forget, you'll have to scroll down right here and we can get these pretty close to where everything just kind of starts meeting and kind of going up together. So that looks good about right there. And so that is our screen transfer strut. Screen transfer, manual stretch, and then I'm gonna call this one the Sky Story Stretch. And with the Sky Story Stretch, it's pretty much the same thing. The only difference is we are gonna take that stretching that we did a lot further. And I really kind of like this because this is really giving us a lot of detail and right off the bat, and with the way that the software is currently, like we're able to like kind of fix a lot of the problems. It, well, they're not even problems, but in the past we would think this kind of stuff is problems because we didn't have easy ways to kind of adjust and get rid of all this kind of stuff. So what Sky Story does is he zooms in quite a bit and your histogram gets a little tricky, that's for sure. So definitely got to keep an eye on that. So we zoom in quite a bit and we stretch in quite a bit. And he kind of basically wants you to put your black point right here where the first color will cross into the histogram. So these are all kind of in alignment. So you can kind of just do a little bit of a thing like this and we could zoom in more if you wanted to. So there's this second line right here. So we're gonna put our black point to like right there. And now on the other side, what we need to do is align with the very first color that crosses into that line. And it's gonna be the red and it's gonna be about right there. So what we're gonna need to do is go ahead and pull ourselves over so we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit more. And now some people would think, well, you're clipping data, like that's not a good thing to do. But actually we're not, we're actually exposing more data. So let's kind of see where we are at. And if we want to, we can again, zoom in more and don't forget to just kind of roll this down a little bit and get us in a little bit closer. You can see we, the closer you get, the more accurate that you can be with this stretch. So I definitely see why he advises to just keep zooming in. He actually zooms in to like a 999, which is just like a crazy zoom. And you know, it he can do it, he's done it a lot. He can do it a lot faster than I can. But I'm going to just go ahead and go with that right there because that is gonna be good enough for our comparison. So we've got the sky story stretch here. Let's go ahead and run noise exterminator on all these. All right, so let's go through the process of elimination here. So the first one here is the just the good old screen, the good old screen transfer stretch, which does a good job, gives us a little bit of a darker background, but within that background, we're gonna see that we've just got details that are hidden from us, and it's gonna make it even harder for us to recover all those details. So you can see that it's just all in there, hidden beneath the darkness there. So we're gonna say that that one is not ideal and we'll get rid of it. Here's kind of our old school style stretch where we just brought the actual stretch points to the beginning on the black point and the white point on the curve. And again, we are losing stuff. And if we want to try to recover that, we might not be able to recover all the stuff that we cut off in this one. So to me, that one is is just no good. The best comparison now is gonna be between SETI's and the Sky Story. And really, this is gonna be kind of up to you. And this, I would say, is probably gonna be situational. You know, depending upon your image and how much acquisition time you have and everything else like that, 
things are just going to be, you know, variable, you know, which one's going to be the best one for which situation is hard to tell. Now I can definitely tell by looking at the sky story stretch here on the right, that it seemed to have done a better job as far as creating a little bit more of a contrast yet bringing out the details here. Um, I'm looking at it on OBS on one monitor and then on my other monitor here on the left where I do my processing is a color calibrated, more advanced photography monitor. So I can see a very stark di difference. Uh, the SETI might have got messed up for me doing a little bit of curves boost. So I could have probably ran it at a regular setting um, and it would have done what it did. But this was something that we could control easily. And, you know, when you're using the scripts and stuff, of course, you kind of set the numbers, hit the button, and then you got to go back and forth and all that kind of fun stuff. But anyway, I think either one of these are great options. And again, it's going to be image dependent, I think, and how much data you have, which ones are going to work better than the others. Uh, for example, the screen transfer function, I know Sky Story likes to use for his stars. Sometimes when I do that, I think the stars come out a little bit too big and bold and bright. But then when I put those and layer those in Infinity Photo using screen, or if you use the image blend script here in PixInsight, you can just dial those things back anyway, and you're all good. So that is what we're looking at right there. So in honor of SETI, what we're going to do is get rid of this one right here because Frank is the man. And I want to show you how, you know, Rasa, ah, one of the best, greatest telescopes ever. So we can see just how much data and beauty it collected at F2. But then we can also see what happens with Rasa stars and misalignments and stuff. But we can try our boy's blemish blaster and we can basically get rid of this stuff. All right, so let's try to take care of this one right here, right off the bat. And I believe we want to do a circle. Yep. And let's just kind of bring it out here a little bit and let go. And then we can feather it out a little bit more if we want to, to kind of blend things in a little bit. And we can kind of play with the opacity on this a little bit. And we can just kind of run that there and see how things go and make little adjustments. All right, let's turn the opacity up a little bit more because I still see it in there. And I mean, to me, that looks pretty damn good right there. I mean, you're never going to get perfection when you're trying to get rid of stuff, even though the one that he has in his SETI Astro tools, I think works amazingly well. Still a little bit of it there, but probably because I can use the tool a little bit more and play around with it. But that just is a quick demonstration to show you how we can clean up pretty much anything now these days. Then if we wanted to, we could always add our stars back. But, you know, that is enough for this tutorial. Stretching with a little bit of fun blemish removal for your Rasas. So no telescope is out of bounds push the limits of what you guys can do with your astrophotography. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So we will talk to you guys later. Peace.